always show up for a job interview as if you've already got the job. Hi, my name is Gillian Anderson, and today I am here for Harper's Bazaar to talk to you about getting into character. On the one hand, it, it, it's easy almost to play a real character because there's often so much documentation and so it makes it easier to, you know, to do research or to um, hone in on things like clothes and voice and etc., which can all help in building a character. But then there's also the, you know, the added pressure of people um, who have uh, very strong opinions of, of the person that you're playing, whether it's family or um, people that they worked with, who, you know, will of course have very, have a lot to say about whether you've got your interpretation right or not. So there's always um, added pressure with that. With um, fictional characters, you know, making up the history um, can be very helpful, but it, you know, you, you are sometimes starting entirely from scratch if even their personality, if it's not quite so clear in the text itself, then, then that's all part of the work that one has to do as an actor in terms of developing you know, the detail and the um, specificity of what makes that particular individual different from say someone else that you played or, or unique in some way. Research helps a lot, especially if it's a, um, an historical character, particularly because I recently played Margaret Thatcher. It really helped to go back into her childhood and to look into how she essentially became not just the woman that she was, but the prime minister that she was. And her background, her childhood really kind of says everything about um, how she ran the country. <laughs> Her uh, mother was um, a stay-at-home mom, but you know, really managed the books frugally. They were Methodists, and that certainly um, had a big impact on how she um, both budgeted the country and um, what a hard worker she was, and how she very much believed in putting the individual first before you help somebody else. And so there, her father was an alderman, and uh, but she also grew up um, above their family shops as she worked in the shop and um, saw both of her parents working really, really hard. And she, later in life and throughout most of her life, became, you know, a notorious hard worker, sleeping three hours a night and never taking a holiday. She and her husband, Dennis, didn't like holidays. Um, or if he went, he went off by himself without her. And so, you know, all of those details can help to really um, influence how uh, one understands a character and how one ultimately, I think, plays a character. So that, that has helped me a lot over the years. She had such a distinctive voice that um, it became, on the one hand, you know, imperative that I find a voice as close to hers as possible. But on the other hand, to find one that felt like I still existed in it somewhere, that it wasn't just a parody of, of Margaret Thatcher. But then with other voices, um, for instance, it, you know, that it's, they show up at some point, I'll speak from my own experience, they show up at some point in my head. And with something like, I think, Great Expectations, I spoke at a very high, childlike pitch. I think part of that decision was because she was stuck, you know, when she was uh, abandoned at the altar, she was ultimately kind of stuck as a very young woman. And uh, since that point, she hadn't left the house and she'd been, um, you know, staying in her wedding dress <laughs> from that moment on. And so it kind of felt that her whole system, her whole way of being, was potentially stuck in that trauma, um, which might have had an impact on her voice. And so, but sometimes I think I, I feel a voice inside my head and there's a big difference between feeling and understanding 
how they sound and actually you manifesting that into the actual voice when you open your mouth and you start talking. So it's important to marry the two things, you know, to actually speak it out loud, perhaps before um, you get onto set so that you can make sure that you know how to um, turn one, a thought, into the other, which is the action. And um, I've sometimes left that a bit too late. If I feel very comfortable with the character, then I, I don't mind, uh, you know, chatting between takes and goofing around. Um, but then if it's either a particularly challenging character, it, you know, further from um, me, or if there's a lot of dialogue in any given day, I'll definitely find uh, a quiet corner somewhere to, to sit and focus. When we were doing The Crown, Whenever I would find a place, I'd take a chair and put it in a room somewhere, you know, in some dark, dusty corner or in an abandoned room or something. And um, we always referred to it as um, my elsewhere, that if the director wanted to talk to me, to have to come to my elsewhere to, <laughs> to find me or that, you know, they needed to find me to come to set or something. Um, so I'm quite fond of an elsewhere and I highly recommend it. One of the characters that I've enjoyed playing the most was um, Blanche Dubois in Streetcar Named Desire. Other than being, uh, you know, an active alcoholic, she is she has probably a bigger personality than any other character I've played. So extroverted and so loud and so sassy and southern and um, on many fronts I felt like she was a far reach from me but also it's quite fun to play a character like that because you can completely let loose and give every element of the parts that you know of yourself that you don't normally reveal or let go uh, to that character which can be quite fun so she was definitely a blast to play. I have found um, over the many decades that I've been in the business that um, hair, makeup, wardrobe is as important as the lines are in a way in, in terms of getting into character, especially Margaret Thatcher in The Crown. And she is known so much for her voice for her, what they call pussy bows for her hair. Her hairstyles were um, as much a part of her look, her personality almost as anything else. And so working on that with um, hair, makeup, wardrobe uh, from the very beginning and then finding the right look and using those outfits, using the wig, using the, the handbag she had a handbag on her arm the whole time particular kinds of shoes that she would wear which i would never wear but somehow in slipping into them they feel um like you're slipping into her shoes and it makes it easier to find your balance i guess the best piece of advice that i ever got was from uh, a fellow student at the the college that I went to. She said, always show up for a job interview, and so for an audition, I guess, as if you've already got the job. With the, you know, enough self-belief, self-confidence. I think that helped at the time because I, I you know, had a tendency to, to kind of show up scruffy and always prepared. But I think going in with a certain sense of self containment and um, focus, I think has been, it was pretty good advice, I'd say.